You've got to have 10 meals a day. It's all about the anabolic window. Congo catabolic. Is this true? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this study. We're going to compare what it's like if you have protein spaced more evenly through the day compared to less evenly spaced through the day and what this actually does for muscle building and for strength. Now, there's always been conflicting information on this. Some people eat little and often spacing protein out all through the day and say this is the best way. It keeps you in a net protein synthesis uh, as opposed to protein breakdown, uh, which makes a bit of sense because obviously eating protein increases muscle protein synthesis at the time. So it kind of does add up in just theoretical premise. But then there's a lot of talk about it doesn't matter about when it is. It's more about the total per day. Um, but is there a difference, like maybe a small difference, but is there a difference? Is there an, uh, an optimum kind of way of going about this? And there was a study done here where they compared these two kind of factors. So they had two groups of healthy men who were previously untrained and were now doing strength training. So they were very much the same and therefore could be comparable. Both groups consumed 1.3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So that was even as well. They both did it over three meals. So there is an actual scope here to probably take this research further and actually really go to many meals a day uh, or to one meal a day, but they didn't do that in this study. But the way they distributed the protein through these three meals was where the difference was, uh, was made. So there was a high breakfast group, and this means that in breakfast, they consumed even protein through breakfast, lunch, and tea. Um, whereas the other group was a low breakfast group, which meant that they had lower protein at breakfast and therefore the rest of the protein was taken in the other two meals throughout the day. The breakfast group only had 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight uh, at breakfast time. So obviously quite a small amount in that total time frame. So what did they find? Well, guess what? They both built muscle, you know? So it, it shows you that there is, um, you know, effectiveness in, in consuming protein more evenly and also not, but was there a difference between two groups? The evenly spaced group did better with building muscle. They increased uh, muscle mass by 2.5 kilograms, whereas the low breakfast group who had small amount of protein at breakfast only increased by 1.8 kilograms. But when you think about it, you know, it's, uh, it's a difference. Over a long period of time, it probably stack up to being a bigger difference. So it shows you can build muscle in both cases, whether it's evenly distributed or not. Obviously, if you're looking to maximize your improvements on this, then you want to space it out if possible. Obviously, you've got to bear in mind your lifestyle, of course. They also looked at one rep max strength as well. And guess what? They also saw a significant difference here in the evenly spaced group compared to the unevenly spaced group of the protein. So again, for strength, it seems to be true as well, which makes sense that it's all bundled into a similar kind of entity. Um, but obviously, yeah, taking this into account, you've got to make sure that your lifestyle fits with this. You know, some people aren't hungry at breakfast, so trying to stuff themselves full of protein would be a challenge. Some people's work patterns are different. Some people, you know, are on the road a lot. And uh, there's lots of things that might uh, be a problem with getting evenly spaced protein. So don't go crazy and think, oh, I've got to get it, you know, like packaging meals on the go and all this sort of stuff, because you know, it, it does make a difference, but it's not as big as you might think. And it's got to fit with your lifestyle. So it's got to be practical. It's got to be replicatable. It's got to be able to be consistently done. And if you make it a chore, it's going to be harder to, to keep going with. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.